Well, welcome to the vlog, guys. And here it is. Can you spot it yet? Can you see it? Some of you would have spotted it by now. This is a giant rat snake that Damo nearly stood on trying to put the washing in the washing machine. And not only that, he's eating a toad. So this poor toad has got, has got caught up in the action. And this rat snake is devouring it. Now these rat snakes, they're not poisonous, but you wouldn't want to get bit by one. And sometimes the buffaloes here in rural Thailand, they do get bit by these snakes. And as you can see, in the leaves, it was quite hard to notice that it was there. It's quite well camouflaged. So if you're just going around the garden, doing your business and watering the plants, and, you know, just doing the day-to-day -day jobs, you may not even see it. And so you may stand on it and it give you a good bite. So we certainly have to remove it from the garden. Uh, I guess we'll let it finish its meal first. Thought a nice way to open the vlog though today. And welcome. So today we have Keith and his lovely wife come to pick up the pigs. Keith is from the UK like me and he's come up with quite an ingenious contraption <laughs> to keep the pigs inside of his car. So he's built this himself, our Keith, and the pigs go in and so the, the gate opens and then when they try and get back out it's it closed so they cannot, um, cannot get back out. So I think this has worked really well. You can't jump up on the top. No, it's easily removable. And did you, did you see this design somewhere? Or? No, I designed it for the job. You just did it for the job, yeah. Because I was suggesting cardboard boxes. Well, I've seen the cardboard boxes and I thought, yeah, okay, maybe <laughs> plastic boxes. But then I thought, oh, we got some old metal knocking around yeah. the house. And yeah. I thought, what can I do with that? And Keith, where, where are you from originally? I'm from South Wales. South Wales? In the UK. Um, a town called Bridge End, which is between Cardiff and Swansea. And how long have you guys been together? Since 2016. And um, how did Where's you guys a? meet? How did, how did you meet E? How did you guys meet? Uh, basically, I was walking down the street with my friend in Patea. Oh, yeah. And she was working in the bar in the day shift. Yeah. That's where the bar can't close because it was one of these group of bars. Yeah. So they have to have somebody there for security. Yeah. So there was her and her friend. Um, both. Well, love at first sight. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But it took some time. <laughs> no. No, I, no, it didn't take that long actually. But, um, how can I explain? Um, we played some games and I found her quite interesting while we were playing the games but a few days I went away to look at some other part Yeah. and then me and my mate wanted to go to the Temple of Truth in Patea, I think that's what it's called, Yeah. Uh, which is an old wooden temple that they were still building Yeah. and basically we asked E to to show us where it was and take us there so the three of us went out together and that was it are you married now or yeah basically we got married at the end of 2017 with a Thai marriage that's where you have the marriage at the bride's house but it's not official yeah and then 2018 in January the 16th we actually registered the marriage at um, Bangkok uh, made it official. Made it official, yeah. And you're living full time now, coming over full time. No, I still live in South Wales. But are you coming back and forward then, is it? When I can, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The plan is to sell up the houses I own, because I own four houses over there. Yeah. Um, I've also got my own limited company, so I'll be closing that down and selling that up, and then come up to retire over here. Is that in the near future, or have you got a five year plan? No, that's near future. <laughs> However long it takes. Yeah. 
Well, I think they've found a, a nice new home with with Keith. The little babies here. They look bigger than usual. We usually sell them quite um, quite little, but no, I think they'll do well. These haven't been trained very much. They haven't had much hand um, rearing, so it'll probably take a little bit of time to do that. But I think they'll be nice and comfortable in Keith's new place. He's shown me his enclosure. Yeah, yeah, he got the tie builders in and um, he's designed a little... I put a little picture of it up here and you can see it. And uh, they'll be going there, so a new home. Do you keep any other animals or not? We've got three uh, large pigs. Um, we've also got currently five chickens. Uh, three male, two female. Yeah. Or hens and cocks. Um, dogs. We got four dogs and two, two cats and three kittens. And what's the next step here then? You've got to you've got to fasten this up. Did you say you've got to tie it or yeah, you're just, just going to leave just it? Wanted you to see how it England, which I yep. think done already. So the idea now is just tie this shut so in transit it um, doesn't come open. Thank you, Kokomaka. P.E. <laughs> These two have been just chatting away here as, as the ties do. So, <laughs> baby, you're not going to cry about the pigs that you looked after, the leaving. Little one. Yeah. Little one is nearly died. Do you want to buy the little one back now? No. <laughs> twice, <laughs> twice the price. <laughs> no, not, not Thank you. Thank you very much. That's yours because she looks after the pigs. <laughs> so they're just giving the pigs some water. So they've got some nice water to drink back there for the drive. They're not too far away. They're actually about two hours away from us. So it's been a pleasure meeting Keith and his lovely wife, E. I know they've got their hands full with our pigs, that's for sure. All right, Keith. Okay. Thanks a lot. Nice to meet you both. Take care. Pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Enjoy Bye -bye. the pigs. Bye -bye. Yeah. Bye -bye. Always nice to have visitors on the farm, especially when they're from my neck of the woods. Keith is actually from Wales, Bridge End. Um, I'm from Manchester, so a um, little bit of a difference, but it's nice to hear familiar accents and see somebody that's living the dream out here in Thailand, setting up his little farm with his, his missus there. Keith is, uh, well, I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying, but he's 67 now, uh, living the dream, enjoying life. Still uh, he's got his nice car and his missus and he's loving it, guys. So why not? More power to him. Thanks for visiting Keith. And uh, nice to meet a subscriber. He's been watching the channel. He knows all the ins and outs of the channels. And so it's um, some, sometimes as well when you talk with somebody that... that um, Sometimes when you talk with somebody that watches the channel as well, you don't realise how much impact the channel has and how many people actually uh, watch it and how much close attention they pay um, to, to it. So it's just nice to get that feedback as well uh, from the content that you put together. Sometimes you just, you make a video, you put it online, you don't realise people actually watch it and people watch it and they, they pay attention, they enjoy it. And so it's a nice feeling to know that. So what I see with a lot of expats coming to live here in rural Thailand in particular, I'm not sure much, not so sure about the cities or, you know, people retiring in Pattaya, that kind of thing. But I know in the rural areas, many expats, they have a little side gig or they have a couple of side gigs. So you saw our friend there, he's now got the pigs. Maybe his, his, his wife, he did say his wife is going to be managing those. Maybe she's selling them for pets, but it's a little side hustle that can bring in a bit of money on the side. Now some of the other side hustles that I've seen um, from rural Thailand Farang are insects. Some people breed insects. Um, I think they do it for different animal foods and things like that and of course they eat insects here. Um, so insects is one of the side hustles that I've seen. You see some expats obviously involved in the rice farming, often indirectly. You know, they just finance the family to to set it up and, and do it. Some people are quite hands-on. I've met some expats that are hands-on. Um, other side hustles, I mean, eggs. 
you've seen already on YouTube that there are a number of um, Farang YouTubers that are involved in in eggs, in production of eggs and raising chickens. So that's another little side hustle. But even I've seen Farang have market stalls. Of course, they're not allowed to work the market stalls, but they help out in the background with the prep and often the wife or another family member will come actually do the, the selling. So there are a lot of side hustles going on. Uh, some, some do it because they need the money. Some do it to stop the boredom, you know. Because you don't want to, I mean, you can sit, you can only sit for so long and do nothing. Um, you want to be, you want to be busy. Some, some are registering companies for that kind of thing, but some are not, you know. Um, some are just supplementing their income through these small little projects. And, you know, I'm not saying you should either way. Technically, um, so, you know, if you were, if you had a market stall as a friend and you didn't have a company set up, that's working without a permit, you know. So I wouldn't, um, I don't recommend these things, but I can tell you that, that it happens um, quite a lot. It's not unusual for Frank to set up small businesses for, for family members, little things on the side. We've taken you to some on this channel. Uh, one guy that had a swing pool in his back garden, and another guy selling trees. So it's, uh, it's not unusual for Frank to do that and, and supplement income. I've seen a few videos out there recently about how much you need to retire in Thailand. I think the values were coming in at like half a million dollars to retire here, which I think is reasonable if you want to retire, you know, like and you don't want to work and you don't want to do anything. But I don't think you, you need to conflate that with how much to actually move and live here. You know, we're not saying you need half a million dollars to actually come and live here. You could come and live here and do certain things to get supplemental income. Even there's a lot of teachers, of course, so people teach on, on the side. There's volunteers. I've, I know for Ireland that work with charities and dog projects. Some are on volunteer visas, that kind of thing. So there are, there are many things you can come without half a million dollars and, you know, don't have it in your head, oh, I'm retiring in Thailand. It's I'm moving to Thailand now. To be sensible about that, like, I wouldn't come with just nothing. And I have had friends that come with literally nothing. I've got a friend that came, didn't even have a phone and, and no money, but he's managed to stay. Um, but that doesn't always happen. And you see in a lot of cases that Farang will either end up getting deported or I wouldn't come with, with nothing. Um, I think having a good amount of startup capital, I think a million baht uh, startup capital it's probably like your bare minimum to get going. Uh, depends also if you're renting or building a house. Maybe you need like a million for the for a house build and a million for for savings. But then you've got to have plans for what side projects might you do. What um, how will you supplement your incomes, or perhaps even supplement your food instead. So this whiz down here. Maybe you want to supplement your food instead. Side projects of raising animals and things like that. Um, especially if you're married, you know, if you're a solo male coming to rural Thailand, just kind of on your own, trying to make supplemental income, unless you're like teaching online or you have some kind of online work on the side, doing something online, it'd be quite difficult. Like most Fanangs do things out here in real time from what I've seen through the family. But I do want to let you know for wannabe expats that to have side projects going on through family, um, that's not unusual. And in fact, uh, if you're not retiring here on half a million, I'd say it's pretty recommended. Um, there are many other things you can do, which I guess I'll dis discuss another time because this has gone on for a little bit. As I walk around this market here and everybody sees the Farang holding the camera, which is not an unusual sight on this market um, these days with me coming around here uh, but but yeah I think that's just an insight into some of the side projects that Farang often have and yes I agree with some fellow youtubers that said half a million dollars to retire here that's like sitting on your ass doing nothing retire here you know family will come visit and you're enjoying retired life I agree with, with that I think that seems about right but I think for moving here and living here 
I think you can have a startup capital of forty, fifty thousand dollars and it also depends how old you are. I was twenty when I came here, so it's like um, if you're like in your sixties and seventies, you gotta think of health insurance, there's a whole different state of mind. Of course Keith is quite entrepreneurial for somebody in his his mid to late sixties. Uh, he told me a lot of ideas that he has for when he's here living in Thailand. That guy's not stopped. He's not thinking I'm retiring. He's thinking, oh, there's other little projects that I can do, this on the side, that on the side, and keep busy. I think that's a good way to go about it. Um, so it's just about mindset as well, but there's two kinds of mindsets, I think, for retirement. is like sit on your ass and, and that's it. I'm done with the world. Nothing wrong with that. More power to you. You've worked your ass off. You've saved your money. You've got your house, you've got your rental properties, and you're making an income through that enjoy your life but if you are coming over here know that there's side projects that a lot of friends are involved with and of course in the city a lot of people do some teaching online they have an online business stuff like that there's a lot that goes on and many have a registered company you know it's quite easy especially if you have a marriage visa to register a company because you only need two Thai staff that's four Thai staff if you're on a retirement visa so um, that's another thing you register a company and you can set up a business and doing just about anything here a restaurant a lot of expats go in the restaurant business, in the tourism business. There's a lot of opportunity here. Thanks for joining us on the vlog today. If you enjoyed it, please do like and subscribe. And uh, take care, guys. I hope you're all well.